番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますハッピーフライデー、エブリワン。I'm Tia Boo and I am here for Little Witch Academia, episode 17 and maybe 18. I don't know. We'll see how it goes.、Uh, last week we had two very different episodes. Episode 15 was. I don't even know how to explain what I felt about episode 15. We got to see Chariot go into action, Ursula drop her disguise for a moment. Uh, uh, There's still been some people talking about like, how I'm pronouncing Kuroa, but I, I think it's Kuroa. That's what we're gonna go with. Um, uh, she's been revealing some of her plans, definitely pulled Akko aside, and then <laughs> invaded her mind and memories without really any consent or anything like that. Nothing weird, nothing crazy. No, 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 no nothing, nothing strange there at all. Um, and had a bit of a face off with Ursula where they both. Both do not seem to respect each other's choices of how to proceed with magic and stuff. So that was a thing.、Um, then there was the other episode, which was uh, uh, pretty simple and goofy. And we awakened a word, but the word was patience, and it, it, Akko's not very good at it. She's really bad at it, even after the fact. She's. Just not good at it.、Um, but, you know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and she was able to awaken the word, so that's good enough. She knows that it's a thing she needs to work on. Whether she'll actually work on it, I don't really know.、Um, I'm a little goofy this morning.、Uh, I've been listening to, I'll be honest with you, I've been listening to s y m p h o g e r songs since I woke up. I woke up with,、um, With radiant force in my brain. And so I went and I listened to it, and then I listened to the ignited version of it, and then I went and took a shower, and then I listened to a couple more s y m p h o n i c songs. And so I'm in a, you know, like, yeah, let's go sort of a mood.、Um, partly because it'll be gym day today, and I'm looking forward to gym day today. I'm trying to get my squat way up because、um, I've gotten, gotten back in the gym, and it feels really good.、Um, okay. Bunch of other things are going on in my life, but none of that shit matters because we're here for anime and that's better than real life. So let's watch episode 17 of Little Witch Academia and see where that puts us.、Uh, I've got said episode up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of the reaction. Picture in picture version available in the description timer on YouTube. If you want to sync up, the, the thingy will help you. Let's go. That did not sound like Amanda, but now it does. Hmm? Okay, this is just a classic, classic Amanda stuff. Got it. Yeah, you're actually reading what's going on. Oh, you're taking shit seriously. Is that the next one? Or the one that we already got? I, I can't count, so. Hmm. Okay, it's the one we haven't gotten yet. <clears throat> Trick. Oh, we're not good at that. E. <laughs> Atta. Atto. <laughs> They're, they're what? Cavendish family crisis? Yeah, me too. What's up with that? Hmm. Hi, you just showing up. Hello. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Do not bring her along. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. Cool. So you need somebody else to do it. I see.
fucking it's like a, a cat with a little toy, just like he he Wow. Cut to drop it. Appleton is where what's his face goes, right? Okay. Yes, yes, show. I will raise my. Okay, now. Ableton. Um, okay. <laughs> Are we gonna have some Monty Python references? We may. Approved. Oh, hi. Andoryu. I don't want to see what this turns you into. Okay. That works, I guess. He's just a wizard with a... Oh, wait, they don't, they don't wizards. Dude, I fucking love Dude Amanda. Dude Amanda is dope. <laughs> Would watch show with, with Dude Amanda as main character. <laughs> for sure. With a little pencil tie? Oh! Fly as fuck. Oh, literally fly. Ha 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 ha. Probably not out. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, this guy. Oh, geez. No. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh oh. So badass. <laughs> Get fucked. Get fucked. <laughs> no. I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Punch him in the face. <laughs> Punch him in the face. He should be able to defend it. <laughs> there you go. Um. Um. <laughs> the familiar exterminator ha huh. ha huh. choo choo <laughs> now I'm just thinking of choo choo oh oh no oh hi yeah, he's not going to recognize you. It's 
Get fucked, Mr. Blackwell. All right, he's going to be a problem. Bing. Okay, instant recognition, yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy Grail. Rat's ass. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Okay. Always, man, always. Hmm. Mm. People rely on him. Yeah, there's an expectation. If only it were a meritocracy instead of... Okay, whatever. It, it is, actually. It, it really is, my man. It, it really is. Mmm. Mmm. Fuck it, I tried. Okay, that too. Love it. Oh. <laughs> you don't need an obligation. You do it because you want to. Later, I'll find it on my own. Yeah, screw you. That's a big place. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, are those gonna animate? I don't, know. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm fucking toasted on statues on walls. Ooh, it's a cubagoid. I remembered what I called it. Thanks to people commenting what I called it. She because she got she got tipped off. Because she got tipped off. It's gotta be Kuroa, right? Wait, where did the Cubagoid go? Did the Cubagoid become the Grail? What the fuck? This fucking guy. Where's Frank? What is that? Is that an ivory, like, uh, uh, carving? Inset carving thing? Huh? Oh, yeah. Ding. I'm a dirty cheater. Kick some ass, Amanda. Let's go. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Oh, put that away. Boop. You have stinky armpits now. Oh yeah, you're... Uh... Punch him in the face. Oh, that's unexpected. What? Why do we have... Black suit KKK bullshit going. Full Inquisition. What? <laughs> the helmet grill. Doing, doing. <gasps> it's a great picture. Put that as your profile picture. <laughs> Man, it would be cool to have a wanted poster. Except for the 
being wanted part. Oh, I believe that. Absolute idiot. But she has the router, right? And there's a wand right there. So now she needs to say something. Oh, wow. We're serious about this shit. No, of course not. Don't say it out loud. Oh, my God. You're going to destroy our priceless artifact. It's fake. It's the fake one. It's a fake one. Is that physically possible? I don't think so. Super cool, though. Ah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yes. Really? Okay, I'll take that. That's some JoJo shit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Duel? Is it a duel? Tell me it's a duel. Swords? Rapiers? Ha <laughs> ha! Sick. Sick. Fair enough. Kick his ass, Amanda. Oh. Kick his ass, Amanda. Push him off the bridge. Punch him in the face. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I really want him to get punched in the face. That's what you use the guard for. You just punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a he's a big dirty cheater. Yeah. Ah, camera stuff. I think shooting star arriving would be too much to hope for. I can't. Also that. Punch him in the face! Alright, this is sick. Okay, Tsubasa? Tsubasa? <laughs> and cheating time. Mm. Fucking Not the real grail Whoa Maybe it was the real grail No it was a cubemagoid Oh they are gonna animate Oh shit You're gonna need some magic guys Please let Akko go that's fucking sick. Whoa, we got rocket fists. I forget what that's uh, the first reference to. Hmm. I don't think so. Is he going to become the armor? Oh, that's awesome. He just unintentional Iron Man it.
and he's berserking it. Oh my god. Lol no. Lol no, you deserve this. <laughs> Is his head flaming? That must be uncomfortable. No, it's a cubagoid, dude. The sword. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is the coolest! Akko! There we go! Oh jeez! Okay! <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, it worked out, so whatever. <sighs> what? What? Okay. Oh, I love that stretch. Ding. Yeah. It's a fucking cubagoid. What does that mean? Yeah. What was the goal of putting the cubangoid there instead of the... Yeah, we got any repair magic? Uh-oh. You're a fucking disappointment. No, it was your dumbass son. Wait. Is he actually going to come around? She beat you fair and square, my man. Can he explain it himself? No. Tradition and history. Choo choo! What? Punch him in the face! They saved your ass, Lewis. There we go! That full dog is, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, let's bounce. Yeah, let's bounce. Not really. Why did... Why Cubagoid? Why? What was the point? What was the purpose? It wasn't to steal the grail, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to see that too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, what's up with that? What are you doing, Kuroa? You're just gathering intel, right? What did you gain from that? The ability to create an army? Something like that? Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. Okay. Punch him in the face. <laughs> Lovely. I really like this episode a lot. I really like it a lot, a lot. I really wonder who directed it uh, and also who was just in generally in charge of it. We go for a word. We don't get the word, but we do get some badass shit. Um, Amanda is is glorious as a character. She's just wonderful. Uh, uh, a solid give no fuck tomboy type of type of vibe coming off of her all the time. Um, really can't really can't hate that. Kuroa is casually pulling strings from the background and foreground. Um, really curious about that. I love, I love this because it's so right on the money. We know exactly what Akko's motivations are, and this reveals to us that Kuroa knows those motivations just as well, and more importantly, knows precisely where to pull on the strings to get Akko to dance, you know? Oh, but I suppose you might be able to shed some light on why Chariot disappeared if you were to discover the seven words. <gasps> I'm in. I'm gone. I'm doing it. Boom. Okay. So here's my question. Why did Kuroa send a Cubagoid to replace the Holy Grail? What was the point of that? Did she steal the Holy Grail? I don't think so. Did she... What, was there ever a Holy Grail there? Or was that just like a lie? I don't know. What's the deal, man? What's the fucking, what's the, what's the shit? I don't know. Okay. Some side notes. Uh, uh, choo choo. Uh, Akko as a rat is very cute. Uh, Akko Nezumi, quite cute. Um, dude bro Amanda. I mean, she's already kind of a tomboy type character. Turn her into a, a dude type character. She's just a badass. It, it's, it's just what happens. Like, she'd be a badass regardless of gender. So, boom. Just a badass. Love her. Um, she's great. And away we go. I, the, the, look at that shit. The fucking pets. Like the, 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 oh, yeah. Get it. Um, awesome. So we go around. I'm, I'm kind of confused about this. I'm wondering what the deal is here and what we're like, what we're trying to make be a thing here. I don't understand this. Um, I guess, I mean, we're in the UK and so this is soccer. This has got to be football. Uh, uh, who do these foreign supporters think that they are? I don't, I don't, I, I guess he's thinking competition with other nations, football teams, right? Or, or soccer teams, I suppose. Our, yeah, our honor is on the line with tonight's kickoff. Everything falls into our honor and our tradition and our family and all that jazz. Great. Um, from the first moment that we meet these two characters, Louis, Louis back here is such a fucking dick i hate him instantly and so he's perfect um because he's meant to be a total hate sink for the episode we he's a brat and a bastard and a cheater and a liar and a thief and a bastard and a brat and a etc right we're not meant to like him and we do a really good job of making him unlikable i love the slightly slightly tilted framing of this episode uh, of this this shot and the the boards um on the ceiling that we see here really cool little trick to give everything a kind of a, a dutch angle in a way that you can't on a vertical shot like this from above but by tilting everything and then creating a framing device around in the foreground that obscures the corners of the screen you do create it and that's really cool um okay 
strong statesman. And this is the perfect, like, father-son dynamic where the son doesn't believe any of this shit. He's just following along in his father's footsteps. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. I hate him. Um, yeah. Love these, love these little bombastic cuts. Uh, hold on. So... This is fantastic. It's even better than I thought it was. Okay, so we get set up before the, the frame switch, or, or before the cut. We set up the motion. <gasps> it's kind of the equivalent of... Um... Is this the wrong book? Basic character movement. There we go. Oh, wow. I didn't realize... That's really cool. There's a whole section in this book that I wasn't aware of, because um, I haven't gotten there yet, uh, 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 on on frame rate and like like frame order for specific kinds of motions, which is super neat. Ah, anticipation, action, reaction. Uh, the starting, the drawback, the move, the go past. Um, yeah. So this is our anticipation here. Why is my phone ringing? Okay, because somebody's calling me and I don't recognize their number. Fuck off. Um, anticipation. <gasps> and then pow. And when we do the, the pow, the thing that I really like here is the camera starts zoomed in on his ear and then pulls out rapidly at the same time as he moves forward, um, which just accentuates the motion a lot. <gasps> pow. It's great. The anger, like, builds up within him and then bursts. It's pretty cool. Okay. Ta. What? Ta. Awesome. Huh? Don't you know who you're speaking to? No, punch him in the face. Um, punch him in the face. That's my favorite thing to say right now. Uh, uh, it's, it's up there with fuck you show. Okay. There was a rat. Uh, exterminators. Blah, blah, blah. Angry, angry. And Mr. Mr. Broski shows up to save the day. Uh, and we get a chance to discuss our principles to each other. I gotta find these things and do this thing. Why? Why do you admire this witch? Why do you care? Nobody asked you for this. That's a really interesting criticism. Nobody asked for it. Does that mean that they don't want it? I don't think so. Nobody asked me to make videos about anime, right? Some people like them, so... I think most of the time... When it comes to artistic endeavors, people don't know that they want a thing until it's in front of them. Um, until they experience it, and then they're like, more. That's when you know that, that something's working, is when you want more. Hmm. Who would wish for Chariot and that kind of, that kind of expression? Well, nobody, because when we're in our daily lives, we're like, I want something fun. Also, I want to get my shit done. But we don't know what we want for fun most of the time. Not until we've had it before. Huh. That's interesting. It's a, I, it's a weird idea. Um, okay. But we double down on it, of course, because Akko is a solid determinator. And the answer is because I want to do it. And aren't you the same? No, no. It's all conduct and all expectations. But what about what you want, man? And he answers with this. Life is not about what you want. And I think he is powerfully wrong and i think that the show thinks that he is powerfully wrong we wouldn't have akko as a protagonist otherwise we would have andrew henbridge as our protagonist and he would be like the world wants me to be this and i will do it mm. and then he does it and and that's the whole show and it isn't interesting and it isn't fun and it isn't enjoyable and it isn't isn't entertainment but instead we have akko who says that what you want in life is what matters Life is about what you want. What else would it be about? What other people expect of you? Why? How is that going to help you? They're going to die. They're not going to matter. You're going to die too. You're not going to matter. Do what you want. If you can do things that you want that help other people, all the better. But do what you want. <laughs> That's what matters, man. All right. The things I must do have already been decided. That's some bullshit. Uh, and we kind of, we infer that. We, we know that that is the case. All right. And this is something I decided for myself. I'll become someone who can make everyone laugh and fill their hearts with excitement just like Chariot. Sick. I will fulfill it. And it is a matter of will. And I'll never give up until I do. So, a little favor. Uh, can I find that, that thing? Oh, she's gone. You're not going to help me? Bye. 
awesome. Awesome. Not going to help me? Get cut. Get off the team. Don't need you. I do like this. Uh, I was wondering about this setup. I said it when it happened. I was like, I don't know if those are going to animate. One of them does. I mean, it's the one outside, but it's still, still, still a setup. And then we have cubicoids. Uh, so, what the fuck is the deal here? There's this chest on the thing, and presumably it didn't have a holy grail in it before this. But now the cubicoid is in, and it does. Unless the cubicoid just invests itself into the object the way that it does with the statue. I don't know. I just don't know. All right. We confirm and double confirm that Louis is a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater and uh, has stinky armpits to boot. Uh, so everybody hates him. And wham, instant, instant, we have the uh, uh, fucking, I, I don't even know what they're supposed to be, Inquisitors? I, I assume that they're supposed to be the Inquisition against witchcraft and non-Christianity, but yikes. I, I, I do love that they all have, like, tailcoats still underneath. Um, it gives it a, a, a different vibe than the whole, like, robe and cowl situation. Makes it quite obvious that they're all still students, which is cool. And he gets himself a nice, crazy helmet. Uh, a classic torture chamber situation, as one would expect. And we all get caught. Oh, no. Um, and when he says that the punishment is torture, he's he's not fucking lying. We got, we, got, we got finger breaker puller thingies. We got iron maiden thingies. We got chain, chain chomps of doom. Uh, all sorts of stuff. I don't know what any of these are called except for the iron maiden. Um, but that's some, that's some bullshit. Witches are meant to receive judgment. That's some insanity, my man. Uh, okay, we move along. Andrew semi-saves the day by just saying, hey, there's a tradition that deals with this. Maybe you shouldn't be torturing people who just walked into our school in the modern era. Uh, seems mildly illegal. Uh, maybe we should have, like, a, a duel, which is probably also illegal. I'm not sure. Are there laws about dueling in the UK? I assume that there are. Um, dueling law... I've, I've never looked this up. Dueling laws, UK... Legislation against dueling from the early 17th century duels became illegal, uh, fell uh, largely out of favor in England uh, by the mid-19th century. Cool. And the last duel before legislation, blah, blah, blah. Great. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, it's fully illegal. Coolio. And here we go. This might be one of your things. Ready for the duel. Uh, I, I think that the whole duel is amazing so i'm going to watch through most of the duel right now and then i'll come back to you and talk to you about it and we'll jump through to the pieces that i think are are the coolest because it was all kind of a blur of awesomeness um when i first watched it watched it give me a sec okay cool so start of the duel i've only i'm only like 15 seconds in um the stab <laughs> the stab through the coin is wonderful as a moment of betrayal and and cheating as usual the coin comes down we're focused completely on it wham the sword is there Barely parried. Fucking awesome. Uh, what the what the hell are you doing? We get this this rush of attacks, this big sweeping speed line at an angle situation. And it's not just at an angle, it's constructed the speed line so that it feels like it's a tunnel that he's going through. There's a, a depth to it. You can feel it in the motion. It's 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 a, a depth to the speed lines, which is wonderful. Brings it around. And I love the line that he says here. There's no need to to fight a witch fair and square. Um I'm che he's cheating preemptively, right? Or, or or retaliating against cheating preemptively, which is to say he's just a cheater. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, you were going to cheat anyway because of what you are, but she's not. She physically can't cast magic at the moment. So he's he's just a dirty cheater. He's a, he's a brat and a bastard. Um, our next sequence is probably my favorite of the dueling sequences because of the camera movement. This isn't the most uh, uh, uncommon thing that we've ever seen in terms of camera motion and stuff. We've got what look like digital backgrounds and what looks like digital camera movement. What strikes me as fantastic about it is just how on point it is. And more than that, we've had a couple of shows where, that we've watched, uh, namely Beastars, where... Um, uh, we're working in CG 3D camera space for the entire show, and the question is not, is it right? Because of course it's right. It's it's always going to be right if you have a CG camera. Um, it's going to be like in the position that it needs to be. The walls and the, the, the surroundings will be accurate to the characters, yada yada. The question is, how do you move the camera in order to convey better what you're trying to convey with each scene? And the answer is like this, because everything that we get in this camera movement sequence 
try to ignore the characters for a second. From here, where is our camera looking? Off over over uh, 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 Amanda's right shoulder. We follow the tension of the blades out and then her bursting backward. And then there's a jerk to it when he jumps back into the scene, right? Wham. Here. It jerks and twists. And we keep doing that kind of a twisting motion as we're bouncing. Fa, 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 fa. And we maintain it through here. Maintain it through here, all these following moments. And we even we even are able to convey stuff like we're on the edge, we're falling by the, the camera tilting and us getting a moment of vertigo before we actually see her foot slip. This is fantastic in terms of in terms of conveying like micro fights because every fight sequence is a uh, uh, just like okay, <sighs> take a step back. Um, every fight sequence is a conversation about ideals and is is a discussion and a battle of of ideas uh, and thoughts uh, at least in anime almost all the time. Um, uh, you can watch, uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf's What Makes a Fight Scene Interesting video. I think it's a, a, pretty much a foundational text on how do fight scenes, how, how should fight scenes go. Um, I, I think it's a fantastic video and, and one that everybody should watch. Um, but in the same way that any argument, any good argument is a series of semi-structured points that form into and point toward a, a conclusion and a, uh, a whole, you don't make an argument by just like saying the thing over and over. You make an argument by making structured uh, uh, supporting points that support your primary thesis. In the same way any argumentative essay uh, uh, works is you present a thesis and then you structure out points in a variety of paragraphs and formats in order to support that thesis and to, to demonstrate via evidence and via logic that that thesis is true. Um, in any fight scene, it should be that as a broad understanding of, of the argument going on, but each conflict, each clash of blades, if you will, each moment of dueling, each punch or punch missed or punch deflected is a sub point of the argument, right? The whole argument is I'm going to beat you and the other person goes, no, I'm going to beat you because blah, blah, themes and thoughts and ideas and stuff that we have that clash with each other. But the way that we construct our argument around that is with each blow. What we get here is this fantastic feeling like each blow is being conveyed as well as possible, and it's awesome. It's just awesome. It feels like a good argument, um, although one where one side is cheating, which is to say deflecting and ignoring the points of someone else uh, and the rules of the engagement. Um, love this little, this little bad juju. Uh, this is great. We're breaking our line. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, wham. It's, it's a dynamic, interesting, enjoyable fight scene. We do get this scene, which is, is like what I would call like choreographed, where we're thinking about how the characters are moving directly in opposition to each other. Ting, ting, ting. And then the rebuttal. Ting, 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 ting. Rebuttal. And then she goes full Tsubasa. Let me put a let me put a thing right here. If you've never seen this before, go watch Simpho Gear. You need to go watch Simpho Gear. You just need to. Um, um, Tsubasa, is that you? Who else would fight in a sword fight by 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 doing a um a, a, a windmill? That's what it's called, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called a, a windmill. Um, breakdancing move, windmills. Uh, who would do this? Nobody. Only Tsubasa. Oh my goodness! I got <laughs> It's so cool. It's ridiculous, but it's so cool, and it wins. Bada boom! Unconventional, and ridiculous, and insane. But hey, we're witches. That's what we do. We do un 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 unconventional and ridiculous and insane, until we shatter the thing because Mr. Lewis can't stand losing. Uh, and. Armor time. Uh, this is super dope. He fully, unintentionally, accidentally Iron Man's this suit of armor onto himself. I love the scene for it. I want to hear it as well. 
Those sound good. It doesn't sound like pots and pans. I, I would... I would expect the Foley work on this to sound like pots and pans, and it doesn't. Might be a trash can lid. Or just somebody knocking a trash can around. Something like that. It's got the right feel to it. And then the, the cool thing is that the sound immediately before that is um, ceramic in nature or stone. <laughs> that. That's, that's like multiple layered uh, ceramic vases being broken, layered over each other. I think for the Foley. It also might be just multiple stock sound effects of things breaking, layered over each other. Regardless, it works. And I'm, I'm really happy about it. Okay. So we turn him into full armor guts. Uh, or Iron Man, you know, whichever, whichever you prefer. Uh, help! Help! No. No, punch him in the face. I do love the whole flaming hair situation. It's pretty neat. And this is bad. This is uh, very bad. I love the way we demonstrate his motions. Also, what's the... The multi-eyes. What's that a reference to? It's not Ava, right? No. No, it's something else. I mean, it's it's pretty similar to what... What Mr. Mr. Green Dude with uh, with kendo swords does in Kill a Kill. It's kind of similar to that. I guess it's just a, a, a fun design that they like for this stuff, which is cool. Um, all of the motions of the fully armored Louis uh, are super snappy. I, I don't know how to explain it, but we give a feeling of overwhelming force through the, the like rate of force generation that he produces. So... This could be a much more sweeping cut, but instead we kind of jump from pulling out from his face uh, to further out over the course of just three frames, right? Right. Uh, da, 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 da. One, two, three, and we're out, right? We're fully out, and then we cut to the next thing. It's super quick. Um, so that gives us this feeling of like whoa, an immense weight being moved um, because it's very heavy. But then as soon as it hits the like the arc of power, it goes boom. It's kind of like a power clean, which is probably not a great uh, analogy for most of you. But if you've ever gone and watched somebody do a power clean, that's kind of how it feels uh, is like whoa, um, yeah. Uh, let me let me just write down power clean also Tsubasa so that editing me does that um cool yeah Andoryu shows up um we get the same sorts of things here I also love the faint shadow barely dodge cut through the smoke and reveal self is really neat um I'd like to see that more frequently because it, it, I've seen it before, but like this works. Faint shadow, barely dodge, cut through smoke, bounce away. Nyom, nope. And again, it's super snappy. Hmm? Bam. Um, and and I think the sequence that really cements that idea in my mind is this, where we've got this overwhelming force coming at us way faster than it should be able to move. Um, and then we cut to the side scene where he's just wham. Wabam, wabam, always on Amanda's heels, and it's just through pure ridiculous athleticism uh, that she's able to escape each of them. I, I love the flow of this whole sequence. Um, we're also doing like interframes between them. So she moves, he moves, she moves, he moves. Super cool. Big dramatic angle from below, other cool stuff. You know, people in danger. Akko saves some people. 
incoming giant monster thing. Okay, Come, Amanda fucking does this. Screw awakening a word. Amanda's the main character. Can Amanda be the main character? Can I see that impact frame again? Hold on. Ho 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 Holy macaroni, that is sick. Uh, I'm just gonna take a, a little picture of that. All right, cool. Wow. Wait, were there two? Was there another frame after that? Are there more? Hold on. Yeah, what what was that? That's so dope. Flash, flash. Okay, it's just these as it bursts outward. It's not actually a full impact frame. Cool. What a fade in with the eyes. Oh, that's so sick. Mm, so sick. The sword bends, reshapes itself. Kuwabara style. There were two there. And bam! Amanda, you are a fucking beast. So very similar to the, the cut that we had before of, uh, uh, what's his fuck, of Lewis coming in for, for the first strike uh, after the initial, initial cheating. Um, same sort of a tunnel in the speed line back. It might actually be the same speed line background. Um, just shifted a little bit. But woo, wham, and we follow it up through, hit him straight in the head, get the classic severing at the, uh, at the skull plate. And the cubemagoid disappears, and away we go. Um, this look, right here. Damn, I fucked up. Also, everything that I know about the world might be wrong. This is a great look. It looks, it looks great on you, Lewis. Uh, keep this one on you. Uh, cause a little bit of humility would, would serve you very well, my man. Um... That or getting punched the fuck in the face. I guess getting stabbed by a girl and having your suit of animated against your will armor fall off of you, that could be enough. I still wish he just got punched in the face. I think he deserves it. Um, now I'm feeling like Adine Abernath. I don't want to punch her in the face. <laughs> so great. Um, and we we drop into a full dogeza, uh, full remorse. I really fucked up. And Andrew takes care of business and does precisely that. This is, it's, this is, it's cute. It's quite cute. So what's the deal with the cute McGoid, huh? What's the deal with that? Also, good, good thing that Amanda's not leaving. Amanda should never leave. Why? She was recording data, right? But it wasn't data on the grail. It was data on the fight. Was that the goal? I don't know. I don't know. What are you up to, Kurova? What are you up to? You crazy, girl. You crazy. Okay. This episode was excellent and has has generated a lot of discussion. Um, we're probably going to end with this one episode. Uh, in fact, we are. I, I don't know why I said probably. We are going to end with this one episode. Um, before we do, I do want to know who directed this one. Because this one is... The pacing is on point. The action is well-directed and, and, like, well thought out. The whole episode is really, like simple we infiltrate a place we get caught we fight our way out uh, except with other things layered in and those layers add a lot to it i like this episode a lot and i'm curious about who was in charge of it um i wouldn't be surprised if it was somebody relatively high profile uh but i don't know let me look up okay masahiko otsuka on screenplay masayuki no first name on uh storyboard Masayuki Yamaguchi. Uh, Masayuki is an animator and director working for Gainax. Debuted as assistant director in Evangelion. Uh, storyboard on an episode of Darling the Flank Franks. Uh, is the person who is directing Evangelion 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Um, cool. Got it. Uh, screenplay, key animation, storyboard on Furikuri. Uh, uh, Nadia... Kari Kano, uh, one episode of Kill a Kill, two episodes of Little Witch Academia, a bunch of Macross Plus, that's cool, and a whole fuckload of Ava. Uh, also is the director of the death segment of Evangelion Death and Rebirth. That's pretty cool. Uh, I did not recognize this guy. I should, I should know this guy. 
So storyboards done by Masayuki. Sick. Uh, episode direction? 417 is Yoshiyuki Kaneko. Uh, or Kaneko. With episode direction credits on Gridman, on Awari Monogatari specials. Weird. Uh, this one episode of Little Witch Academia, a single episode of Darling in the Franks, and not much else. That is genuinely surprising to me. Um, good job. Good job, Yoshiyuki Kaneko. You did great. This episode is fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it exactly hashtag deep, but for a, a, a punchy, uh, action-focused episode where we get some real punchable dudes and then we fight them with swords hell yeah you did great uh this is cool cool episode of a cool show love it happy days i'm gonna call it quits there because we're ahead and i'm excited and i, I don't want to watch i don't want to watch more i'm good i'm good uh i've been tia Boo. this has been little witch academia episode 17 i loved it i hope you did too and i'll see you next week for 18 19 who knows we'll see peace